I'm glad you liked it, Derek. But having fun with this one might not have been in the same realm of what I think is fun. This is why I don't look at IMDb scores for Supernatural anymore. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, we're back. Episode 14 of Supernatural Season 15, Last Holiday. Holy crap, it's been a while. And I really shouldn't have watched Season 3 before I started doing this again. I should have watched some of the episodes of this season. I can't believe I stayed up until midnight to watch this. This episode is about Sam and Dean finding out that they apparently had a wood nymph in the bunker this whole time. Apparently it was on standby. It just was that computer that you leave on and just have it go to screensaver and you just leave it for months and months and months and they just turned it back on again and apparently this wood nymph came out. And this episode, by the way, is written by a gentleman by the name of Jeremy Adams. Do you guys care to take a guess at what this guy has written throughout most of his fucking career? Animated kids shows. Not to say that it's not bad that he's writing young kid content, but holy god is it clear as day. Dean went from the guy who was afraid of going to hell to a Scooby-Doo character realized. He's a full fucking cartoon in this episode. I've never seen him act like such a child before. It actually got a bit much. I almost couldn't stand it. There was one joke though that was quite funny. When they got the monster radar and they came in to those vampires and literally chopped their heads off in a very bad shot, by the way. I liked it how he said, well that's gotta be a record. No searching, no dead ends, in and done. That's the quickest one. That's maybe one of the better parts. However, the kid content does work when addressing the issues with Jack and his soul issue which I honestly forgot about throughout all of quarantine and his moral dilemma, the relationship with him and Mrs. Butters. Oh my god, did I not stop thinking about Butters from South Park every time I heard it. She at first seems to be helping Jack through his pain, through his guilt, and then it turns out that she's actually just a very, very overprotective mother. Really overprotective. And then she thinks that Jack is a threat, and then she tries to tell the brothers to kill Jack, but they don't want to either. This episode is by far the cheapest one they ever did in this entire season. And the fact that it was going to come out in April, yet it was clearly a Christmas episode, at least a good solid section of it was. What, what, what is Andrew Dabb doing? You have seven episodes remaining to the end of this season, to the end of this show, to the end of this legacy, but you put the Christmas-centric episode in April? I know that it's not actually Christmas, I know they're just celebrating all the holidays that they've never gotten to over the years, but... Guys, what were you smoking in the schedule room? Not to say that the happy vibes of this episode aren't welcome. By God, we all need a bit of cheer right now with everything going on. But it's just baffling to me what on earth their entire schedule, their entire processing of this has been. I, I think they literally have a dartboard full of ideas and they just throw darts at it. This episode is really hard to get through just mainly because I've been watching the more serious season being season three. Watching that, then going back and watching this is hard, guys. It's almost unbearable. To see the characters that grew into such developed and flawed characters and seeing Dean walk around in a PJ outfit, pull up his pants and show his weenie, but he forgot was there. Why? This episode gets a 2 out of 7. It's bad. I know it's trying to be funny, but... I, j I, I shouldn't have watched season 3. I guess it's my own fault. I shouldn't have been watching any of the previous stuff. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Don't go and look at the IMDb reviews. There's one guy there who has a similar opinion to me. And he's being ripped apart in terms of the thumbs up to thumbs down. That's what happens anytime someone gives a critical thought about this show on IMDb. It's toxic on there. Mind you, YouTube is toxic too. I, I agree, I'm not helping. Anyways guys, that's all for me. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. 
but we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.